presentation staff. So this is me, and I would love to share with you a lot of things that we have for you. So David, I know that you uh, passed there. So let's go to share very quick. I would like to additional that, Aaron. What about if they say their name, where you are from? I'm very quick, um, the business like my business is in a very sentence, one sentence, and then I would like that you say um, one win for the week. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's go to David. I saw you first right in there. So David, share, share with us. Um, I'm David Bertrand. I'm French Vietnamese and I'm based in Bali. Uh -huh. The name of our uh, company is called Vivid Intraglobal and it's an education and development company. Um, a win that happened yesterday, we hosted in our back garden, our first uh, wedding. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, yeah, celebrate, thank you. So Lisa, Lisa, what about you? Yeah, um, yeah I'm Lisa, I'm a true, true world in Hamburg in Germany. Um, and I, yeah, I make sustainable natural jewelry that helps people embracing themselves. My win for the last week would be probably my first referred customer. So someone that I didn't approach directly, but who was contacting me actually private, like, hey, I heard you make this jewelry. Um, I would love to give my girlfriend uh, one of your earrings. Uh, could I, how can I get it? You know, like, so that was really, Cool, that was the first time that that happened. Super, yay, okay, well, win. Uh, Hashi, uh, I, I don't know if he's pronounced it good, okay, but you correct me, ha, Hashi, Hashi. <laughs> That's very close, yes, Hashi. Hashi, Hashi, please. Awesome, uh, my name is Hashi. I am from Atlanta, Georgia in the USA of America. Uh, my business is uh, Holistic Methods, and it's what I do is I help connect people with their authentic songs through coaching them on how to turn their personal affirmations into songs in the ukulele. And my win for this week is I'm holding a uh, eight week long course and we're in week number three and people are facing their shit and they're having reactions and I'm all about it because we're in transformation and just, just been a beautiful, Beautiful thing going on right now. All right, thank you. Super, well done. Thank you for sharing that. It's amazing, guys. What a wins. Nadia, welcome, Nadia. What you can share with us. Hi, everyone. My name is Nadia. I'm based in Jakarta, born and grew up here. I'm an engineer, chemical engineer in energy um, technology. Um, my business is in, at the moment, um, I'm uh, developing uh, renewable energy with um, innovative technology called OTTEC, which means um, ocean thermal energy conversion that is um, producing electricity with a uh, seawater temperature. Mm -hmm. And another related business is um, sea salt, um, artisanal sea salt. I make it with uh, a lot of infusions and uh, seaweed, citrus, and you know, nice stuff. So if you're interested, just please connect with me. I'd like to connect with you. Okay, uh, my latest win, uh, last win is that I started to get repeat order for my salt. So I'm very happy with that. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you for coming, Nadia. Janine, welcome, Janine. Uh, please, very quick introduction and a win of the week. Oh. Month. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Geneva. I live in London in the UK. Um, I'm currently studying, so I'm, I'm just writing a dissertation at the moment, sort of looking at um, well-being in education. I am a post-16 educator and also um, recently qualified as a corporate well-being coach, so I'm really into well-being. Um, my win for, I'd say for this month, is... Um, being part of um, our National Health Service, Service the NHS Commission, um, a training video for the continuing care teams around trauma. 
Um, so again, trauma and wellness for me kind of go hand in hand. So it was great to be a part of that and to film that and to roll that out across all of the um, medical and educational teams across the UK, um, looking after adults and children. So that's sort of like my big win. So yeah, that's me. Thank you, thank you. Well done. Did you share with us the win of the week? Your win? Yeah, okay. I, I my, win, my win of the week? Well, yeah. Um, that is my win of the month actually, because I mean, oh, the, the filming, um, the, the filming actually took some time to do and also some time to prepare. So um, yeah, I'm just waiting for the actual video to be rolled out and just kind of be part of the training to the professionals. So that that is just my win-win for Super. the month. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Maya, I see you there. Please, Maya, share with us. Hi everyone, um, I'm Maya Michelle and I'm calling in from Bali, Indonesia and I'm a nutritionist. I've been helping people take control of their health since 2002. Um, basically what I do is I help people individually, uh, privately, one-on-one -on -one, and also in groups in retreats and workshops. And I teach people how to relinquish their codependent relationships with food. My background is communications and performance. So it's interesting for me to see how people relate um, through food with each other. And um, as a result of the work that I do, people tend to uh, increase their immune systems to um, diminish and completely eliminate gut imbalances, hormonal imbalances, and people generally feel much, much happier because they, they feel good, their, their health um, is good, and they know that the things that they're doing are, are what's made them feel better. Um, so my win for the past week would be probably my, one of my clients, um, it's funny, Haji and I are like connected, but one of my clients like just released like tons and tons of, of shit. <laughs> and, uh, and also as a result um, of um, just, just releasing a lot of what needed to, to get out, uh, she became much more um, balanced and uh, a grounded for her community and as well um there was a, a just a a sense of relief and an, and an opening and a new trust in her own uh intuition That's the thank you thank you good one and great connection with the tribe well done fifi don't escape fifi tell us something Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Fifi. I'm from Indonesia. Then I'm doing with the Fifi Intra Global Education and Development Company. Um, what achievement for this month? I'm breathing with my hobbies. Then I do. I'm finishing some painting. And this achievement of the week is deal with a language company that provides German language lessons to nurses looking to go to Germany. This is like Indonesian nurses. Wow, well done, well done, super, well done. So Michelle, I know that she's there, but she is not feeling well. So let's go to pass to her. She's just listening, I stay there. So well, I Aaron, I don't know if you want to, uh, Michelle? Are you there? Yeah, Do you want to share? Have, um, so hello, everyone. Um, my name is Michelle. I am in Manado, Indonesia. Um, well, I'm not really, I won't be here too long. I'm not feeling too well, so I'm just going to rest soon. But I didn't want to miss out even just to pop in and say hi. And just to see everyone, you all look very well. You, It's nice to see you all again. I hope you guys say the same for me, but that's not the case. But I just more I wanted to share and to celebrate that um, today we had our monthly meeting. Yeah, um, we had our monthly meeting for April. And I think the win for us, um, I guess, Aaron, if I can share on behalf of the company, 
um, uh, this month, um, April, April was the highest selling, uh, highest revenue that we've made mm-hmm. in the last, um, in the year, actually, yeah, in the year, not just a quarter, but in the year. So it's been really great to be able to celebrate that and see the um, report. So congratulations team and it wouldn't have been possible without the tribe of all of you, yeah. So thank you so much, everyone. Yay, thank you, thank you guys, thank you. And this is a great, great um, celebrations. Thank you for sharing the wins. And if some of you, I said, share the wins for the week, it's because I know that we tend to celebrate the big wins, but never celebrate the small wins, okay? So just remember to celebrate every day wins, every, every day wins, okay? When you go to bed, you maybe can say, okay, what was my win for the day, okay? I just, that you keep this on mind. So back to you, Aaron. So you are mute. Yeah, thank you, Claudia, appreciate that. Thanks guys for sharing. And as you share, make sure you put the comments in the chat because uh, we will save the comments and share the com- connections when, and if you wanna meet more people, so that's great. All right, awesome, let's continue. So that's basically a little pitch there. We did a graduation of high school kids and you know it was funny to watch uh, how big a deal they made the whole pitching thing. And we always try and teach people that, you know, Pitching should be just a conversation. You know, every time we're sharing ideas with our partners, friends, family members, sharing a book idea, that is a form of a pitch. It's just a conversation to exchange an idea and hopefully say it in a compelling way that the other person can buy in to whatever it is. So pay attention. So that was a really, really nice pitch that you guys gave. Thanks for doing that. Okay, so some of, uh, I think Claudia kind of jumped the gun on this one, but uh, I don't mind going a bit further. It's always nice to share the wins and that's what we do with the, um, the, the shine section. So I just wanted to maybe keep it fluid here and ask if anyone uh, wanted to share if they had a referral given or received or they did a deal done or like Janice shared, she's doing a big thing for the government that we can consider that a deal in itself because that's something you're part of or you have a testimonial where you use the service. And it's always nice to hear if it's one also from the tribe where you know someone else can hear of the great service that you you, you've given uh, or you've done a one-to-one with someone, which means you booked in some time, you invested you know, 20, 30 minutes to get to hear more about your partner's business and what they're doing, what they're looking for and see if there's a way to collaborate. So has anyone got a shine or something to share just for the month of April gone? So we always do this one month uh, previous. Last month we did uh, March, if you remember, uh, but has anyone got anything to share, a testimonial, uh, Referral that was done or a deal done or did a one-to-one meeting. Anyone have anything exciting to share before I embarrass you? I know everything. I know everything. No, just kidding. Yeah, okay. You don't have to if you're shy. Apart from Michelle's already let it out. Okay. Um, I would probably say, uh, well, actually, Haji, I think, had something going on this month. I'm going to embarrass you, brother. I think you had one of your most successful months as well last month, right? With with your conversions for your program. I'm so embarrassed, first of all. Um, <laughs> and, and yes. Okay. Yes. So I, I, I don't really want to share, but do you want to at least tell us what you did differently that maybe we could all learn from? Because I'm sure everyone here would love to be embarrassed with having successful sales. Sure. What do I say? What do I say? Yeah. Um, you know what, I have to attribute a lot of my success to the education and growing of myself and working through your programs, Aaron, that you, you've created here through the business and becoming more informed. But I think mainly I've made most of the money because I've learned the process of beta launches mm-hmm. and then getting the revision and the information from people, um, from interviews. And that's helped me create a program that I was able to market in the language of my clients that want to um, take advantage of what I'm offering. And it's just helped me to become more transparent and just convey the, the value I'm offering to those that really want that value. And I've been able to, to uh, double what I was doing before um, in the last previous month, so. Yeah. Wow, wow, we heard that, we heard the D word. So you said interview, could you unpack that a little bit? I'm not gonna embarrass you. 
Just sure. So when I did the interview, I, I asked a couple of questions um, to find out how my past clients had enjoyed my process. But the most important question for me to ask was how I could make it better. And Aaron created a way to kind of find out how to ask that question in the midst of good questions to really get the meat and the potatoes of what I really need to revise my program to make it better. Uh, uh. So if I remember, you took a big package and also kind of tiered it so it gave people an opportunity to have a journey with you, is that right? Sure, yeah. So my, my, I have a high ticket offer and uh, I put a beta launch, not yeah, beta launch together and lowered the tickets extremely just so I can get a more focused view on what my clients would need. And then I'm gonna do a market launch in June after this one, this beta launch is over. So it's been invaluable as far as for information and strategy. Mm, awesome. All right, we, we got for that one. Thank you for sharing. I just needed uh, that man to say something because you he, he it well. And uh, that's for most of us. Most of us find it easy to talk about concerns, but not our successes. I don't know why the world is that way, but we hope you get into a good, good, good habit of shining here, guys, because it's a safe place and it's so important because you are doing the work. And that goes for everybody here. And your time will come, but don't shy away from being celebrated also. It's uh, really, really healthy. Okay, before I move to the next section, unless anyone else has something to say now that we've had one embarrassing moment, anyone else? Want to share? Okay, three, two, one. Okay, cool, awesome. All right, so without further ado, I know some of you have been really interested to see what David's been working on, and uh, I won't embarrass this uh, young man too much, but I do uh, love our story as well. He <laughs> came to one of our workshops, I think that was three years ago or so, and he came with his son, and I've done so many workshops in my life, guys, but this man just at the, I think, it, I don't even know if the workshop actually ended. He just boodled, well, no, he gently passed through the crowds, came straight to me and says, I've got two questions for you. He asked me one of the questions that was pretty tough. And he goes, okay, I trust you. So I want a book in Indonesian and I want a book in, uh, in uh, English for my library for our community center. And I was just so intrigued by, just how upfront uh, David had been, but also I think we said a few things and booked in a couple of meetings later on. And I guess all I wanna say about that is he's just got this ability to follow through with, with his word. And I think this is something that's so, so critical uh, for someone who has not just a vision for a, a company uh, in education, but has actually a vision to impact uh, communities and you know, being uh, one of the founders for Intro Global, there's Fifi who's also in the room here, uh, who, uh, again, these guys got married after three seconds of meeting each other, and they've been married ever since, for is it 11 years now? You know, I, I'm just baffled by their commitment, their resilience, their audaciousness to really go out. And one of the biggest things I just wanted to say about all those consistent moments I've had with David and Fifi, and even the way they raise their kids, we've had dinners together, is you know these couples just really believe what they believe and they really live out their mission of having standards that they just don't bend on you know and no matter what's going on around them they just keep progressing forward and keep to their standards and i think there's a lot to be said about the logo and the dire community sorry the borneo area where they've got some land and they're doing some amazing things that need uh, revolutional support and we're really with them the whole way uh, but I just want to say honor you, David, and Fifi too, and you guys are just extremely great role models as couples as well, and how you work together in your community space. But uh, I'm sure I don't want to take the limelight to say too much here, but you've been such a consistent person in our community, and we're super grateful for the collaboration you've offered uh, the Tribe as well. So without further ado, let's uh, give a big warm welcome to our presenter today, David Bertrand, for our presentation. Go for it, man. Oh, I need to stop sharing. One sec. Uh, sorry, one second. Okay. Thank you, uh, Aaron, um, for making me blush. I appreciate that. Good way to start a presentation. Um, 
so I hope everyone can hear me. I have a tendency to talk really loud because I don't trust online or phones yet, I guess. Um, so our company is called Vivid Intraglobal. Uh, we're an education and development company. Um, and our philosophy can be summed up in three words, uh, life, color, dream. Um, so I'm the founder of this company with uh, Ms. Fifi Konyawati. Uh, she's, I'm the CEO and she's the director. Um, I have a background in industrial engineering and anthropology and I'm French Vietnamese. Uh, Ms. Fifi has a background in education and education management and she's Indonesian. We started this company in about 2010. And before that, I had a lot of experience in education. My first being in San Francisco, uh, then Paris doing a language uh, company for executives. And then Jakarta was a turning point, uh, the first consulting for, for a bilingual Islamic school in Jakarta. So that was a turning point in terms of my educational career. Uh, for Fifi, before 2010, she traveled extensively through uh, Indonesia, doing a wide variety of work in the education field. Uh, so as I said, Vivid Intergobal is an education and development business. We're based in Bali and we're registered in Indonesia and Singapore. Uh, due to the wide range of activities we do in education, we basically have uh, three uh, big projects that we're involved with. So the first one is the IG Center for Education, Culture and Sports. And that's our, our dedicated community learning center or CLC that really implements our educational principle and philosophies. So we've had a center in Bali since 2013 and we're looking to open one in Kalimantan and Borneo in 2022. Uh, the other business that we have is CLC Education. So that's a consulting and services for third party CLCs. So we'll talk about that later. And then our third project right now is Vivid Kalimantan, which is a startup that uses our uh, ecotech urbanism development strategy. So those are the three main things we're involved in. Um, so I'm gonna go through each one. Um, I'll, I'll go through fast. So the first one is our inter-global center in Bali. Um, so the, the mission of this center is to develop an inter-global culture of Renaissance citizens, social entrepreneurs, and time travelers. So in order to be an IG center, you must be a hub of educational activity. So you have formal schooling, and you also host, we also host third-party courses, seminars, and training, and we have a public library and space for the surrounding communities. You must also be a hub of cultural exchange. Uh, so we host our third-party our own and third party cultural and art events. So art exhibitions, diet culture uh, exhibitions and things like that. And also be a hub of sports, leisure and events. Um, at our center in Bali, we have a full-time curriculum for high schoolers. We've had 300 students plus since we opened. And a big thing, uh, we're going to open a great, a primary in August, 2021, after acquiring a bit of land last week. So that's a big win for us. And we've had a lot of different educational and trainings and things like this, as you can see there. Um, I put some photos of my basketball teams because they're my pride and joy. Uh, so CLC education. So first, uh, what is a CLC? CLC is the Community Learning Center. A uh, CLC is also a physical space in which you create a center of learning culture and play. And a CLC can be a school training center or any other entity or structure that has learning at, uh, as its core uh, mission. Uh, so CLC education provides education consulting, services, network and partnership opportunities to third party CLCs. Uh, some of the partnerships we have, very recent one, this is also a win with Tribe Hut that'll provide all our entrepreneurship programs. So that's great. Uh, we're also last week opened an association of independent learning centers to help homeschools in Bali network, share resources and share teachers. Uh, we've done a, a lot of consulting also since, since 2012 up until now. Uh, Vivid Kalimantan is an education development startup and it uses ecotech urbanism development strategy. So when we started this, we were tasked with finding an alternative profitable development strategy 
which had education at its core and which would address two major issues in the area. One, conserve the rainforest, and to minimize the permanent urban migration of local use to other regions by increasing the quality of life so they would stay there. So where we're working is in West Kalimantan as an area of 5,000 kilometers square, about the size of Bali. And it's a region that's experiencing exploitive development and deforestation. So some of the principles that we worked with is that uh, our working principles, rainforest conservation is possible only if socioeconomic conditions improve. Uh, the youth should have access to aspects of contemporary lifestyle and we have to help them defend against the negative aspects of those lifestyle. And the quality of the life of the local, op local population improve as they become business owners, students, skilled producers, not just workers in a palm oil industry or something like that. So the assets to this project is we, we have very strong local community and government support. We have 10 hectares of land that was given to us for an education related activity. And we have an agreement in principle to stewardship of 5.5 million R of rainforest. So we came up with the solution, which is Ecotech Urbanism. So it has education as its core, which provides skills, entrepreneurship, which will provide jobs, and eco technologies, which will provide a living community with a living environment. Um, so as far as the education, we'll be building an IG center, Kalimantan there, and developing CLC education for the network. We plan on having a thousand full-time students, kindergarten through 12, as well as adult professional education, teacher outreach to teachers throughout the region that we can bring in and help, help train and and share resources with them. Um, the entrepreneurship program is in big collaboration and partnership with Tribe Huts, who will provide all the entrepreneurship online courses and direction for us. Uh, we also have a business nursery and investments um, center. So the entrepreneurship program will go from giving skills to various types of support to possibly capital and becoming partners with over 300 local businesses uh, in the area in different industry sectors within two years, which follow VI principles, which means uh, good business practices, um, socially and you know, socially conscious and ecologically conscious businesses. Um, for the eco technologies, we're involved in green energy infrastructure and the rainforest stewardship program, and we're adopting digital technologies and uh, blockchain technology. Um, so here, this is just a um, review of what we just said. And we have, very importantly, this is a photo of 10 hectares near the capital of the Regency. So when we found this land, we asked them to stop cutting down the trees. And we will be putting a sort of American British style campus there with a lot of green uh, places and uh, walkways and things like that within uh, a rainforest environment. So just to remind you, we have three different programs, IG Center, CLC Education in Vivid Kalimantan. Um, and uh, our call to action, we're looking for serious investors in the Vivid Kalimantan project or our token. And we're also looking for native or fluent English speaking teachers with Indonesian nationality based in Bali for our association of independent learning centers. Thank you very much. I'm David Bertrand and please, if you have questions, don't hesitate. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for that concise presentation. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. There's a lot you said there. Uh, so anyone, uh, I can't see everyone at the same time, but anyone have a couple of questions for David, be it about the program, the content, his direction, how big, or how big and crazy this actually sounds, most of it, but it's very doable. Um, or any, any questions at all? Or any, any gifts to give him about something that maybe inspired you or you were inspired by that you understood? So David, I have a question. Well, Lisa, do you want to go first? Go ahead. Okay. Well, 
I just want to ask you how you um, how this how this passion of how this project comes to you. Um, the passion of education. Um, I've I've taught from the time I was a teenager. You know, just first helping in class and then helping tutor some kids after after class. Um, but where my passion for education came to, comes from was I did a one month uh, trip in uh, Irianjaya. So that's the Indonesian side of the New Guinea island. And I went then to do a, a two days presentation of, of my trip um, in a junior college in the United States. And, um, you know, I, I had everything prepared, the notes, the slides and all that. But as a rookie, you know, I forgot that when they turn off the lights for the projector, you can't see your notes. So, uh, you know, I, I could felt the heat just going from my feet all the way to my face. It's like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Luckily, I had prepared and I was able to give it. But after that, I was really high for at least two weeks, you know, just on the adrenaline and the excitement. And at that point, I knew I had to be involved in education and be a teacher. Super, super. So Lisa, you want to go? Sure. <laughs> I actually had the same question, like how did you come to all of this? They sound like really amazing projects. I also just wondered how many people are you, like just to get, a, get an idea of the size, what you're working with at the moment. So that's a hard question because there's different circles, you know. Um, I would say we're about a circle of five five people that, you know, sort of working on the vision and, you know, getting help for different parts of the project. Um, and then that circle goes to 20 uh, and goes to 50 with, you know, all the different people who have expressed interest in, in what we're doing. And, you know, as you can see, it's, it, there's room for a lot of different interests and in people, um, a lot of different, you know, anyone who wants to teach or educate has a room, has a place with us, really. Um, because there's, there's a lot that these kids need to learn and, and it's, it's not easy out there. Okay, and I have another question, but before someone else has any other questions? Okay, Nadia, go, go. You can go first, Claudia. Well, I just, I just want to wonder how many kids you have now, because you said that you want to support a thousand kids so i just want to know how many kids are you are doing supporting right now so right now we have a formal schooling program uh, in bali so the space uh we've just opened the space it's now 30r so we'll have we have a maximum of 50 students high school students and then next year we'll have 20 to 30 primary students um and we've had over 300, 350 students go through our, our program. So it's a full-time program, right? So they come to us instead of going to whatever other school. Okay, super, thank you. Nadia. Um, David and Fifi, it is very, very interesting and amazing project you have in Bali and Kalimantan. Um, I'm very impressed um, of the scale that what uh, you guys are doing. Um, especially in Kalimantan, I happened to live there for, for a year and then every time you fly and then it's just, it was in 2004 and then it's all um, deforestation, you know, I, it's, it's very sad and then what you're doing is um, amazing. So I, I, I wish you good luck on that. I have many questions though. <laughs> it's so interesting, I just take notes. Sorry? You're part of that circle, even if you don't know it yet. <laughs> um, okay, just stop me if it gets to detail my questions, but it's so many details that I'd like to, I mean, okay, first of all, are you a non-profit or is that? Um... Okay, so we are a for-profit business. We uh, do have a non-profit foundation that we set up in Vivid Kalimantan right. that, that has community learning, uh, leaders and also members of local government that will be a part of it to protect the interests of the local communities. But overall, okay. we're a, a for-profit business, but then we, we decide where we put the profits in terms of our social programs and things like this. Um, I, I, I worked with nonprofits when I was very young, I guess. 
um, when I was about 20 in San Francisco. And I just didn't like the model of nonprofits. You know, I felt that uh, the nonprofit structure is a trap uh, to limit the ways that a nonprofit can grow. Um, so I, I never really liked the model. I preferred building a financial motor that then we could decide what to do with the profits, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, would be interesting to know which part of um, that you monetize. I mean, for profit means uh, that there are part, oh, okay, maybe the education, okay, sorry. <laughs> I mean, we monetize pretty much uh, all aspects of the project. You know, right. do, and the thing is, um, whatever we do uh, for revenues, we also do for free for certain grassroots clients, right? So, mm -hmm. give, you know, school consulting and development to international schools, well, we make yeah. sure that they pay. And then yeah. that allows us to go to a, a grassroots small school like in Bali, where they right. have students, where they built it out themselves with bricks and stuff like that. And then we can charge them, you know, 100,000 a month for the same service. Right, so that's ten dollars, right? So right, right. even there, just as a symbolic, we like to be paid so that they can decide to fire us, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, right, amazing. More like cross subsidy in between your interdepartment. Yeah. Oh, okay, and um, the land that uh, the ten hectare of land that is 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 it is it also maybe cooperation with the local government or? So that's ours, and that's in cooperation with a private individual who oh, okay. is looking for a project. And this yeah. private individual, so he did it on a private level, but he's also right. part of the local government yeah. that um, that authorizes big infrastructure programs. So right. he's able to build a road right to our school, right? But it's a yeah. private individual, but he's also on our board. Yeah, so these questions are actually I'm learning from you because it's probably useful for my project. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so uh, okay, last last question, the, the technical part. Um, what kind of green tech are you using and uh, what does it mean, eco technologies using digital tech and bit blockchain? Okay. So eco technologies is meaning that we're just open to uh, technology and which ones right. in particular, the ones that are, that are eco, so for instance, you know, we, we need to, to, to house a thousand students. We're going to have 60 to 70 structures uh, in that space that you saw, right? That'll be classroom, teachers, dorms, uh, all this stuff, museums. Uh, one big space will be a basketball court. And we're using sort of eco materials. So we've developed mm -hmm. a structure out of bamboo that will fill in with other stuff. And then on top of these structures, we want to fit outfit them with different eco technologies. So one of the roofs will be shaped in a way that it funnels rainforest, uh, rain, rainwater into Collect. uh, a collecting sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Another uh, uh, structure will have, I don't know about solar panels, I'm not convinced by them, but you know, different outfitted with different technologies on it to be yep, able yep. to do a showroom in a sense, uh, a, a showroom city that shows all the different kind of eco technologies that are out there. Because the reality is, and, I, and you definitely know, well, you're developing new technology, but most of the technology that we need is already out there. You know, I don't need to develop new technologies. I just need to bring it in into a large scale project to show that it's sustainable and that it can sustain a city, basically. Yeah. Right? yeah. In terms of digital technology, that means, so we have eco technologies and the other side is more like um, digital technologies. So things that are coming up that are interesting in terms of blockchain and things uh, in terms of financing with tokens um, and you know, for the security and the transparency of the company as a whole, especially when we become partners with 300 local businesses, we will be managing their accounting and their legal. So we need a very transparent, uh, way of, of keeping track of all that and blockchain fits that. Mm, okay. Wow. Because, okay. You know, just, just the idea that it's not just eco technology and we're going back in time to 200 years. You know, it, it's, it's using the technology now, the new technologies in the digital realm and in the eco realm to, to make this work. Amazing. 
Thank you, David. You'll be there. Amazing presentation. <laughs> yeah, how many of you learn a little bit more about technology and forest and all of this? Awesome, yeah. awesome. Awesome. Has uh, anyone else want something to share or gift him with uh, something they resonated with? Um, Nadia gave a great compliment there as well. And uh, both of you are uh, chasing big projects that are revolutionizing the world, I believe. So it's really nice that you two are supporting each other. I think that's really cool. Um, Fifi, you want to give your uh, husband some real feedback? You, you, you got something to say? <laughs> I saw her, her Z raise his hand, maybe you want to say something. Uh, first. Talking to a real teacher, See, she's got the skills. Okay, okay, teacher. Haji, you wanna sure. share? I only have just one thing, it's amazing of what all you've put together. And it sounds like it's a huge passion project, but the technology of what you're having together is really amazing to see how, even the connections that you've been making with the government official that you're connecting with. I'm sure just one of your key members within what you're doing, but. Um, it's amazing I can feel the passion of what you're doing, especially for your basketball teams. Um, that's probably really, really a great payoff inside of your heart to watch that whole thing come about. So just congratulations and more growth to you and your family and your business. Nice. You know, um, just talk about the, the connection with the government. When we started this project, we, we didn't think of the government at all, you know, because, you know, around there's a lot of palm oil com companies and development, mining. So, you know, th there's, there's an interest there and usually government are associated with that, right? So when we went in, we actually went to go talk to the village, villages first, right? To, to inquire about their rainforest and try to do something with them. But through an amazing sort of piece of luck, um, you know, when we started this, I had someone come and ask me how it started with the people there where, where we're working is that they brought their niece over here looking for tutoring because they went from, ba from Borneo to Bali and needed help with international schooling. So they came to me for some private tutoring and it ends up that the parents of this girl uh, was in the local government, one in charge of infrastructure and the mother of both lawyers in charge of small and medium enterprises, right? Helping the development of local businesses. And so through that connection, we were able to get that sort of second layer of social protection, right? Um, so, you know, some things are just, you know, luck happen, happen to, to, to happen. So, yeah. Divine Providence, that's amazing, man. Uh, okay, we'll take one more. Fifi, uh, you, you're not getting out of this one, I know you. Anything you'd like to share? Well, basically David already mentioned of all, but what is our aiming? It's first, it's not about the, the big project or what we do, but first we want to keep the family, stay with their family. That is the first thought. And if you can see these young people leave their hometown to get the modernism, went to the big city, to the crowd area. They think that they get more knowledge and then leave their parents and then their grandparents and then who's gonna taking care of this place? And where is the family's goes? Everyone goes everywhere. And then what they can bring to their own root, you know? And then this young generation gonna building different place. Why not build together? Why not build from their beginning? where they starting their life and when not bring that to their life, that it's actually the first thing that we, we think about. And the project for us is the big bonus, the big bonus, mm -hmm. something yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm. Dream team, the dream team. David, you're gonna add something? I was, um, was going to say, yeah, we, we started very small and our intention was never, well, you know, we had these thoughts, but we weren't uh, married to the idea of having big projects and stuff like this, you know. When we started with TV 10 years ago, we had a little space of 100 square meters. We had eight full-time students and we were doing language courses, right? 
and we had a little library and stuff like that. And we're just, you know, we're happy with it, you know, just helping people, helping kids figure things out and providing an education space for, for our community. And it just sort of grew little by little. And, you know, when there were opportunities, we took them. Um, and I think that for us, probably the lesson more than anything is just, you know, when, when there's an opportunity, say yes and then figure it out, you know? Um, and just be confident in your own abilities that when you get to that moment, that you'll be able to, to make somewhat of a right decision, you know, a, a more a right decision than a bad decision. Um, and that's, that's how we move forward. You know? yeah, yeah. Well said, well said. Well, guys. Yeah, we, we Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you're on fire. Go for it. Yeah, you know, actually, I believe that universe is answering your prayer. But then it's depend on you. You want to make it happen or you're not. And then when it's come to you, sometimes you feel afraid because you know what? Your dream is big. And then when, when your dream come to you, well, catch it. You never know. Maybe you have to go beyond your limit and then do it. Do it with your full heart. Do it with your willing and do it with your mind. When you dream about it, what is your purpose? And then when it's come to us, actually, yeah, we, we don't know what we do, but then we know what what is our feeling and then what we want to make it happen. And then when it's come in front of our eyes, like, <gasps> but yeah, you know, because we never know when is, when is the universe gonna give it back to you? Maybe not, not more than one time. Yeah. You know, we never know. Can I make a short joke? Can I make a short what? Short joke. <laughs> Go ahead, make it short. <laughs> um, someone falls off a boat, uh, they're drowning, they're on a life raft in the middle of the ocean, and they pray to God, God, please send me some help, please help me. And they keep praying, and then one day a boat comes by and says, Oh, do you need any help? And he says, No, no, I don't need any help. God's going to help me. And he does this two, three times, and eventually he dies on the boat, and he goes up there and he says, Hey, God, what, what happened? I kept praying. And God says, I sent you three boats. What else do you need? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna use that one. That straight down my alley. Wonderful. Now, nah, really well done. And uh, yeah, we just uh, finish on that. But uh, David and Fifi, both of you, we want to honor you for the courage and the ability to take action and seize those opportunities. And uh, hate to, you know, dissect the experience because I'm sure it wasn't easy. But you know, we all talked about this on this journey, guys. Uh, called Small Giants. They started small and kept building from there. All of us who had big ideas had to take the first step. And usually I've heard it time and time again that the biggest visions of things that we've seen manifest always started with a trivial little idea that maybe wasn't even related to what ended up happening. So you just gotta take those steps and you gotta take the opportunities as Fifi and David said. And some of these guys just still follow their heart and follow their values. You know, they, they don't compromise that. And I still believe still to the bottom of my heart, and that's why I think we're all here, is you don't have to compromise your values to still get everything you want in life. But maybe it might take you a little bit longer than those you see who are speeding up faster, but I think you get there further because it's built on some right foundations that you don't have to regret yourself of becoming on the end of the road. So. A uh, big round of applause again for Fifi and David. Thank you very much. And uh, you'll get on to our final section, but if, if you really want to connect with these guys, again, guys, you know, I love the stories that David shared. They started small, met this person, who met that person, who ended up being this person. I think Nadia just the other day was telling me she's now working in a big time group of people and some of them were just her friends in the beginning and they didn't know what they each did. And that connection led to more connections that led to so many big opportunities. In our tribe, we just call it one-to-one -one meetings. Invest the time to meet each other and get to know what's going on. You just don't know who that person knows or what treasure they have for you. It's one of the best marketing strategies we have for you. Honestly, you, you can't go wrong. Um, okay, so uh, let's, let's move to the next one, but thank you very much, guys. And yeah, please connect with these guys. And I will uh, jump back into the agenda. 
and hopefully we can still finish on time. So uh, if you haven't yet, just take a screenshot of this. So I think uh, maybe Michelle, or she's probably left, but anyway, screenshot of this little link, bit link. We use this link if you want to connect with somebody else. You basically copy paste it, put it in the, in the chat or whatever, fill in the information of the person you want to connect with, and this will take you there. So when we get the report, we'll make sure we can try and make that meeting happen for you. So that's what the bit link is about, okay? Um, Okay, so let's uh, get to here. So Claudia, I know you text me, but I can't actually see the messages. <laughs> so uh, usually here, what we're gonna do for the next uh, 30 minutes or so, just, just kind of quick, just to get a bit of a feel of how this works, is we dissected the campfire chat at the end into just two parts. One is basically identifying your concern. And that's just where, you know, again, I recommend some of you have done this before, so you know how it works, but we're just gonna speed up the process a little bit to make it more fun. Uh, there'll be a breakout room. Uh, Claudia, do you want to maybe uh, take take it from here? Sure, sure, sure. I don't know. So you... thank you, Aaron. And let's go to also connect to, to each other. Okay, so I would like that you grab a pen, a pencil, your pen, your iPad or whatever you have. Okay. And the next session as well, I would like, next, Aaron. Yeah, um, remember, this is two ways, so we will share both of when, um, whatever you are in the, these breaking groups. Please share with the other people really res with respect and sharing all the solutions, ideas that you have, because maybe you have an idea, you maybe know someone, maybe you have been involved somehow, so you can share all these ideas. And uh, as I said, um, identify the problems and discuss, uh, dis discuss this, okay? Make a solutions and just, just share, just share, okay? So no braggings and just please respect each other and support each other because this is for what we are here, okay? So what we are doing is, remember, what is the 10 problems or the 10 things, issues? that you have right now for your business, okay? Or could be maybe personal issues, you know, maybe I'm procrastinated so much. And this is also, is in the middle of my job, you know? So list right now 10 problems that you are having right now for your business or that is um, in your life. That is maybe stopping that advance with your plans or maybe is, a big challenge right now, so write down, okay? And maybe you can just put, you don't need to make a big, big sentences. You can put like a keywords, you know? So think really, what is all these areas that you are having problems with? Okay, and when you are done, let me know. Could be in different areas or could be in one particular area or maybe it could be with the people that you are working with. Maybe it could be external things. So, thinking all the problems, maybe it could be marketing problems, maybe it could be financial problems, maybe it could be PR problems, maybe it could be uh, resources, uh, human resources problems, could be systems, could be anything, anything that you think could affect you right now in your business. Okay. Good, good, good. Let me know when you finish. Beautiful, thank you. So put your hands up, put your thumbs up, or put a happy face on your screen so I can see. Okay, David, Aaron, good. Okay. Okay, now if you finish, I want that you 
rate these problems, these problems that you have, zero to 10, zero is a low problem, but it's not a, you know, it's not a big problem. And 10 is really urgent, it's coming very urgent and a priority for you. So, or the pain is so big and you really need to solution. Okay, so zero to 10, every one of the problems, very quick, zero to 10, what is the level of pain? What is the level of importance maybe or priority? Okay. Maybe now it's huge and you really need to do it. Maybe if it's a small problem, maybe someone else can help you. Now, if you finish with that, I would like that you identify the top three. What is the top three pain problems or the most three important problems right now? Really? Okay. So now, now identify please an issue for what is the real problem, real root of the problem? What makes that did happen? Okay, and sometimes when we have a problem, we always ask, like, who did it, right? But maybe the correct question is, why? Why happened? Why this happened? So ask yourself maybe a couple of times, why, 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 to discover to the big root. Like, why, let's say that someone leave a glass on the table and this was broken. Why the glass was broken? Well, because maybe someone put it in the table. And was this person put it in the table? Or maybe she didn't realize and she was running and she just put it in there and why and why, why? Maybe go deep, deep, deep. So you can find, really find what is the reason why. Okay. I will give you a couple of more seconds. And what we are doing right now, we are a few of us, but don't worry, I will put it in a groups. Some of you will be three of them will be in a group and two of them in another group, but I will put it in the group. And please share, I will give you three minutes each one, okay? In the case of, well, maybe I will give seven or eight minutes. So the group of the three, you can take two minutes each one, okay? So I will share with you, put it in the rooms, share what is the problem, okay? Maybe someone take the time for one minute or two, talk about the problem, and then the others give feedback or give some. And then I would like that you come here and we will share how what happened, okay? You can share with us a good problems, okay? Ready to go? Yeah, okay, everyone join your rooms. Ready, go. Oh. Do you have enough time? If not, we can share a little bit here. Okay, let's go to share a little bit here. Who has been sharing the problems? Raise your hands. Who shared the problems? Okay, I love the Maybe before that, can we ask how much more time do you think we needed? Because uh, everyone had a face on their look, a look on their face. So yeah, I was. How much time do you think first? Because I was speaking with David and Lisa, and then I was talking, and then in the middle I changed to Fifi, and then we didn't know that it has to be shifted, and so I felt like. Um, how much do I need to share? And you can ask Fifi. I was like, I was sharing and then I saw the notes and I, I couldn't share because no, sorry. <laughs> I was feeling like, okay, is yeah. it enough time to share? And then, okay, do I just need to wait until it shifts to partner again? So I'm not quite sure uh, what to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Lisa, Lisa and I. Dropped off, so mm. the groups uh, not dropped off, they had to go, uh, Maya and uh, Haji. So 
the isolation happened in that way. So generally when you have your three minutes, you share your three pain points and all that. So maybe you want to help facilitate that. Just there's only four of us or five of us here. So Claudia, you want to maybe help bring everyone on the same page? Yes, I would like guys, because we are not too many. Let's go to, to continue here, okay? So I just want to know uh, who wants to share very quick, very few sentences, what was the problem, very punctual, and between all of us, we will give some solutions, okay? Who wants to share? The people that didn't go yet? David should go. Okay. <laughs> David, um, share, okay. share something. So that's what happened, Nadia. I thought, Lisa and I thought that you heard the solution in the left to go handle it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, good. Share with us, David. What is the problem? Share one um, of the problems. <laughs> so my problem is right now, the one that's the most annoying is consolidating data of all our past activities. So, you know, for today, I just hired this week a, a high school student to go through my 10 years of Facebook and everything I liked and put it into folders that have to do with what I'm working on. So, you know, just stuff like that. Um, you know, how many students that we had exactly, um, you know, so it's, it's just consolidating all that data. Yes. So suggestions, guys, who want to give some suggestions, some ideas? What do you think? Are, are you using, David, any CRM? Are you using any database that you are or right now you don't have any system at all? Well, you know, for the system, uh, I'm taking uh, the TSP uh, business course with Aaron, which is all about systems and stuff like that. So that's one way, I guess I'm addressing that. Uh, another way for me to be just do it. So for instance, Facebook, I got someone doing all my likes, but today I just like five things and just put them in my general folder instead of just directly putting it in where it should be. Right, so things like that, I tend to, you know, push it away. Um, yeah. So Aaron, yes, yeah. please. May I make a suggestion? I'm thinking what would be smoother for all of us. <clears throat> we'll let David share his issue, and then we'll let everyone share their issue. And what we'll do is we take notes in case we have a recommendation. Because sometimes some issues are actually the same for across the group. So. What I'm suggesting is like David's shared his issue. You had a solution for CRM. You just write David's issue is uh, data management, CRM recommendation, right? Then we hear everybody's issues. And then when we get to the round of sharing, we won't block the flow because we could go actually for David, I have this. And maybe, uh, you know, I want to clarify. So that becomes a, a different phase for the sharing. You know what I mean? So now good, good. the top problem and clarify what it is, and then we do the solutions uh, together at the, at the end. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. super. So David, so your program is database and how to a program at CRM or someone some program to store your information, right? Is correct what I hear? Uh, yeah, I'm um, yeah. Okay, super. Okay, for Fifi, you have a different problem, Fifi, from the top 10 that you have? That is the fit problem. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Yes, of course, I, I also have from different things. I mostly on, on the back and I just talk one by one person, but I have difficulty on talking in front of the public and I cannot stop helping and let others do their job. I just want to jump on it. Okay, thank you. So Lisa, what is your problem? Oh, I'm unmuted. Um, mine would be around time management and focus uh, because I have just this last week uh, figured out or made a, like a time plan uh, with like governments or departments that I work together with here. And I figured that I have a lot less time than I thought for what I want to do. So I guess my problem would be around effectiveness, effectiveness and being very sure that I'm using the time best I can at the moment and not 
going or ma making too many mistakes or learn from them quickly um, because it seems like it's uh, one, one chance at the moment that I need to really um, make work. Um, and yeah, I guess it's effectiveness and focus, yeah. Okay, so time management, effectiveness and focus. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nadia. Um, similar, but not the same to Lisa. <laughs> um, basically, uh, redirecting and reprioritize my time and focus because the business is taking me to a certain direction that I need to attend to. Okay, thank you. So prioritize on time, okay? Time wise, okay, beautiful. Wina, welcome to the call, Wina. Uh -huh. So if you want to join us, we are sharing for this, the top programs, one, one of your top problems that you have. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I can com combine the problem, what Lisa's problems, uh, Lisa's problems and also uh, Nadia's problems is about time management and focus because uh, it's uh, well, it's at the very first things that I already set up in a month or in a week before, but then something happened, and then it was it uh, when something unexpected happened, it becomes like uh, uh, anxiety and doesn't know what to do, what uh, and becomes like messing up everything. But then, uh, well, well, the result is achieved, but probably it's not like uh, uh, perfect or it's not like uh, this, uh, what I, the result is not like as I, I expected before. So like that combinations of these problems and uh, these problems, time management, okay. yeah. Okay, so a combination of focus, prioritize, time management and all of that. Okay, thank you guys. So, who want to share some solutions or who want to share about, let's go first with CRM, okay, with database. So any solution, any thoughts, any advices, any brainstorm? Um, I know David is saying that he's working with Aaron on that, right? Aaron, do you want to say something about that? Um. Mm, I think, yeah, okay, let, let, let's, let's start with David. Does anyone else have, okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let me jump in a bit. So David, could you just clarify your main issues? I wrote here, you now know there's a need to manage your data, correct? And it sounds like there's a lot of backlog that you need to catch up on so that you can stay on, say, weekly management of data versus uh, you know, 11 years or seven years, it sounds like a lot of years to catch up on. And this is just an example you gave us Facebook photos of previous students and trying to put them in a systematic way. But then uh, recently, there's more recent stuff you're doing and the, 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 the present and the past just don't seem to be up being archived very well together. Did I, did I hear you right? Okay, you're muted. So maybe a different question is, is it data management or do you have a systematic way of being organized yourself or where things are like you know in, in, in cooking they call it maison place first in first out for example that's a uh, you, you, you're french so you can understand that so it's about you know making sure if you buy new stock you 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 put the old stock at the front and then you make sure the new stock goes behind and that's that's a process of how to manage stock control for example so i do this in my own projects but I just need to clarify what, whether that's the problem is your methodology of how to organize information. Uh, do you have, uh, mm -hmm. that, is that the issue? Or is it just the fact that you're overwhelmed because there's just so much to catch up on? Um, well, it's so much that I, it's, 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 it's the, I guess, is it a priority? Is it an emergency? Um, and is it going to help for the future? So, uh, First, by taking the course, I realized that my past data is important for my future. Mm -hmm. That I need those numbers to be able to, um, yeah, to quantitatively characterize our activities. And you know, and just not say a bunch of students, 
you know, so I just found out um, a couple of days ago because of this guy that we've had about 350 students come through there. And I had, an, you know, I'm just working year by year, next student, next batch, they move forward, but never knew that we had about 50 every year, but I don't know how many were new students and all this stuff. So that was, it was actually here, good, nice to hear a number, you know, and I think, I think for me, it was in the beginning, it was just, you know, you get five students, six students, it's like, why am I going to bother tracking these guys? You know, so then you don't do it the next month. And then at the end of the year, you're like, oh, I only had 35, 40, whatever. I'm not going to do anything with that. And then just got caught up in that where I didn't look back. Um, some of it is just caring about it. Some numbers I care about. Some numbers I didn't think were that important, uh, but they are, you know, realizing that. Um, and then the systems, I'm pretty confident that we can put in place systems, but then it's uh, me following some of those systems. I kind of, um, you know, tend, I think I'm, I, I think quickly on my feet, but that maybe makes it that I'm not as structured in the systems and stuff that I, that I should be. And as we're moving towards me doing less teaching, those systems are becoming more important. Yeah. So it's just a, a whole realization that it's super important and then realize that I have a whole bunch of past data that I haven't dealt with. So yeah. it's kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and just a bit of background, because I don't, I think you already answered his own question there, guys. Uh, David and I were discussing about data uh, collection some months back, but then he realized he's actually really, and I'm just giving you a compliment here, David, but you recognized through the traction program recently that you were actually been good at data and understanding the value of data collection because you do it for your basketball team. So yeah. maybe if I may challenge you to say, what if this IG center was another basketball player on your team? How then would you approach the data collection? Because you know it's gonna help the performance. And then if that's true, then maybe a different question offline, just the two of us, is how can you approach the 20% of all the data needed for your, for your player that affects 80% of their performance? And just looking at that to start with, not trying to do a whole 100% of marketing department, for example, just going 20% for anything you do. And obviously for me, it's more smarter to come from your current situation and work backwards than it is to work from your past and work to the future. You will never catch up because it's easier to start now and work to January and get that as an end goal. You know, what can you do for this quarter gone? And then once you're done, keep going in your current situation and add a couple more hours to do a week at a time or a month at a time backwards. And that way, you bridge the gap over the years, you know? Because to be honest, nothing really matters before COVID. I would agree, most of the world has changed. So some of that data may not be so responsive. It's good to track it, but not so responsive. What really matters is what happened in the last quarter, in the last year, because that's where the state of the world is responding at the moment. Uh, would, would be my recommendation, I could be wrong, but uh, based on, I think, the conversations we've been having, I think that's how we look at it. Does it does that help a little bit? But happy to unpack that further. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, cool. Uh, yeah, I, I tend not to want to jump in, guys, for solutions. Just I know David's already data collecting, and I just wanted to touch on the discipline he has it already somewhere else in another field. So I'd like to just support him to transmute that. Otherwise, I'll probably keep my mouth shut. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, Claudia, back to you. Yes, thank you. Well, I just want to extend this to all of you guys. Maybe if your business is a starting or is a small business, maybe right now is a good timing to have a system. Could be a database system, could be a CRM system, could be a system, but a system that you have control of how is your business growing up. Because as David says, Maybe right now you are not paying attention of these small things, but later on when it's growing up, growing up, and you have more clients and more clients or so selling more and do more things, then later on, how you will measure that? 
Okay, so it's very important to know measurements about years, about data, about quantities. So it's important for all of you that has business or are starting a business or launching a business, like think about what is the system or what is the database, how you will manage on that, okay? Good. Thank you, David, for that because will help to everyone, okay? Uh, do you want to say something else, David? Or uh, yeah, just a little oh, okay. what you said was just, you know, when I think when I started, when you started this business, it was so small that investing in systems, I think, takes time right, to, to build it correctly. And I think when I first started, I was like, for the amount of business we're doing, I'm not, I don't need to put in place systems. Let me just go with what we're doing. And then by the time this system really needed to be put in place, I had this elephant of data that needs to go in there. So yeah, it, it's better if you're able to and think about it is to do the system. So little by little you put in there and you're not caught up later with this mound of data to deal with. Yes, since the beginning, we need to have system and more if we want, we want to um, grow up or um, evaluate, um, escalate our business. So it's really, really important to leverage our business. Thank you, David, for that. Okay, so for the rest of you guys that you are talking about and management and focus and effectiveness and prioritize and all of that, who who have an idea? Who do you think could be good? Yeah, or, or rather, so who has a solution for someone else? Well, who has a solution for that? You can cross examine because we've got 15 minutes. Yeah, I would like that you also participate, guys. I mean, I know that we can give you a solutions, but I would like that between you guys, maybe some of you say, oh, I have an excellent methodology, or I have this one. So who can share? Okay, Lisa. Actually, I'm stealing David's suggestion to me, but I thought it was really great. Um, or the way I understood it, I would like to share that um, because he was saying, focus on your goal and like keep doing the steps towards the goal. So if the goal like for Nadia maybe changes, maybe like adjust to that goal. Um, or for me, if my goal is that the time is shorter, I need to adjust to that goal and my steps towards that. Um, or for Wina, who has something unexpected coming up, I guess also implementing that in a way and adjusting the goal and the steps to get there and then just following them, even if they're different or harder or I don't know. Good, good, good. Okay. What else? What else? Who has another one? Yeah, Nadia, do you want to mention something? I think you really need for for so I'm I'm go because three of us have similar problems. So what I think I should do for myself, right? Is that okay? I'm giving yeah. solution for myself. Sure, 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 sure. It's, sure. Like, yeah. oh. it's all okay. You're the boss. <laughs> Right, so I think, um, yeah, I just, um, just, just uh, really be firm of um, for me, everything is important, but really look at what is critical and focus on that and then let go, be brave to let go the other thing. Wow. I think. Good one, <laughs> good one, Nadia. And I, I will, I will, I mean, if I can share, I will say something. Maybe another thing that you can do based on what you say, Nadia, imagine that you have a list of things, right? List of things. Maybe you can say, okay, if this is important and urgent, so then important and urgent is A, no, it's priority, it's top priority because it's urgent and it's important. Then B, is not urgent, but is important. C is urgent, but don't, no important. And maybe D and E is like no urgent, no important. And maybe everything that is under that category, maybe you can delegate, right? Maybe everything that is not A, B, or C, or even A, B, maybe you, 
you you manage that or you can ask if someone else can do it but delegate things as well we want to you know sometimes we are very protective of some work or is our baby or we want to do it and we want to do it because we want to have the results but sometimes we don't need to do that okay that's why we have people that's why you have teams guys and this is really important having a team and trust on your team okay the important thing is have a good communication and clarity when do you need it why you need it and how would you like to have the results or something like that and if you pass that communication and pass it to someone else then they can do it right and this and also we are talking about that uh, when you went to the rooms we are talking about that sometimes the problems are small and little but because we left them we left them suddenly start to growing up growing up growing up and can be very very important and urgent and now we need to resolve it right because no one else can resolve it so why not starting since the beginning if the problem is little and it's not important it's not urgent pass to someone else, right or put it in your agenda that sometimes you need to do it but if the if these things that you need to do are important and urgent so then make priority of that first okay so based on that, I don't know if someone wants to add things, David. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, based, based on the experience that normally I'm helping some, some schools, meeting with the schedule is not easy. That's why like, I agree for Aaron, David, uh, Nadia, and Claudia, all the idea, it's it's true. But then one thing that that you need to set up is a time frame. It's it's maybe time frame we didn't realize because sometimes, like example, as a teachers, you like one subject and then you really into it and you drag yourself with that and then you forgot that it's supposedly just three weeks, but then you can make it one and a half one and a half month and then it ends up that. I need more time. And then this uh, report card have to be submit, the midterm have to submit, and then the, the test is coming soon, and then everything is not running well, and your students cannot catching up your idea, which is just more dangerous. It's the same like when we work, how we're we managing uh, our, our partner, the staff, you know, like we have students, other teachers, everything is connected. But then if we have time frame, at least if we're leaking off the time, you know that, oh, maybe one or two days. Okay, that doesn't hurt. But then if you know that you're already leaking one week, you immediately can stop it. It's like your switch on, off switch, something like that. Super. Yes, David? super. Super, Fifi. Thank you. Yes. How many of you think that, okay, if I set timing, so every task and you set down and, and that is important as well sometimes we have all the things in our heads right and then we think we manage everything but if you don't write it down you can see the importance or you can see the magnitude or you can see the length or how many timing is consuming so the most important thing is that you write down every morning or every night maybe you can write down what is all the activities you need to do right and then you you see what are not really the importance or do you need to get involved delegate that and the ones that you need to involve set the time you know from that time to that time i will do it like you say Fifi. you know and if it's something that really passionate well i know that i just have two hours and that's it and i will not go over four hours because then i will not have time for the next things that i need to do right so allocated times I think that if you work with an agenda, but write it, write it down all the things that you have, first point is this attach the ideas of your mind, right? So you can see what is all the things. Second is allocate the, priori the priority, okay? It's a priority A, B, C, D, or E. And then allocate time. So it's beautiful, yeah? You think that you doing that things will help you 
with the uh, priorities and help you with what is next? Yes, David. Um, Lisa and the group mentioned that she has sort of a deadline. So for people who have a deadline, you reverse engineer back from that date and you can set that. Otherwise, you feel like you're just working and when should I finish? Reverse engineer the time. Uh, yeah, beautiful. We don't really have a deadline. Uh, that can be important, but um, what I wanted to focus on was in order to focus more, um, liberate yourself more, free yourself more to do other things. Because I know, you know, after a certain number of hours, you can be, I can be at the, at the desk, at the office, but I'm not there anymore. You know, I've, I've lost focus, I'm tired. And if I just stay at my table like that, I just start feeling bad about myself. Because I'm like, I'm at the table, I should be working and I'm not. So it's good just to break away and really go do something like, you know, I'll be at the desk supposedly working, but I'm thinking of something else. So I might as well leave and go do what I'm thinking about and, you know, go to the pool, play with my kids and, and really be detached from work, right? Not be at the pool thinking about the deadline I have tomorrow, you know, be able to mentally compartmentalize so that when you aren't working, you are really refreshing. You know, and I think we don't give ourselves enough time to do that. You know, where we're cooking dinner for our kids, but still thinking of the, the presentation we got tomorrow. We're playing with our kids, where we're thinking about the bill we have to pay, you know, and, and it doesn't allow us to rest. And I think that's very important to focus more. I think we have to uh, separate ourselves more from the work. So then when we come back to it, we're really 100% focused and able to 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 handle it yeah very good david thank you so david what he says is perfect so have a deadline and then a reverse engineer right if this is for in two weeks okay how then allocate all these tasks tasks to arrive to this goal so write down all the tasks and then put timings right and the other important thing that you say david is Sometimes we think that we are working too hard because we are taking until 9, 10, 11, but we are losing time, right? Thinking on another thing. So really don't pay attention or distracted with the phone or visiting Facebook, or really we are not there. So one or another thing that you can do is when you feel that you are distracted, stand up guys, stand up, walk, go for a drink of water, but you just do like some stretching. And if you change the stage, okay? If you change a little bit, then you will get focus again, okay? So change your mind, just walk, drink water, or just do some stretching. Do 10 jumping jacks in the place. And then you will see that you will be very focused again, okay? This is like a change of statements, okay? Change of statements. So we now, what did you think of all these ideas? Good? You are mute, Rina. <laughs> uh, because I had shared these problems also uh, uh, with parents and our help with the will of life. There were like uh, several factors, including personal life and about the personal uh, goal or career that I would like to pursue because I see my career so fast during pandemic and then I had so many things to be done by myself that because uh, I would like to know everything at that time to uh, to uh, get what I want but it is impossible and that uh, the effect is on my health and my everything is not good which is could be affected, uh, impact to the also clients, to the uh, company, to the people I work with. And yeah, so um, back again to when I was thinking about taking risks and uh, how to delegate, how to do with teamwork, how to uh, know the risk, it's, it's quite important. And somehow it's not like, for me, it's not like, um, I still uh, sometimes come back to the things that, oh, I have to do everything. And then I uh, I don't know the time when David mentions about uh, yeah you have sometimes you have to, to break away you don't push uh, sometimes I push myself too hard on myself 
uh, but then uh, it didn't work. So I have sometimes to be cool to, you know, talk with people or me time or, or to break time and um, make myself uh, a bit relax and then I can continue work again. I think that's quite important to thinking about uh, relax or me time before we um, start again to uh, start again to work on everything. That's that's David's situations also. It's uh, important to consider. Beautiful. Thank you for your sharing, Rina. Yeah. So, how many of you think that it's really important to have also balance in our life, right? That if we just work, 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 or do something, and we don't have health, wealth, or health, we don't have, we can focus on more things. Yes, David. Um, I'll, I'll share something that. Um... I told Nadia, I think one time was, you know, as business owners um, leading this, we feel guilty when we're not working or if we're taking care of ourselves. And I think I said to, to Nadia, like, you know, it's very important. You're, you're the head of the company and taking care of yourself helps your business. You know, if you break down, if you have health problems because of stress, because you don't rest, it hurts your business. So for the, the entrepreneurs here who aren't able to just take care of themselves because you should, you take care of yourself because it makes your business stronger. Right? If, if the head of the business is sick all the time, not healthy and stressed out, it's gonna hurt your business. So take care of your health and give yourself breaks to help your business. If you can't do it selfishly for yourself, do it for your business. And because they need, your business needs a well-rested, unstressed, person at the top leading it, right? So if you don't do it for your, do it for your business, rest with your business. Agree. Well done, well said, baby. So pay attention, and this is having balance in our lives, right? By like paying attention with what we eat, what how, how we drink, rest, and, nice. and give some uh, pamper for us. So, so thank you, thank you. So I know that we are almost finished. Is the, the, our time was finishing. So Aaron, you want to, I will pass it to you. But thank you guys. I think this was amazing. And I think we get a very good, good tips for all of us. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you very much, Claudia. I think we, we haven't, we, we got onto something really interesting. And just to give you guys some opportunities, we know this is going to happen. Even last time we had about 20 people in the group, we can't go through to all the issues. So we're really doing our level best to make the Tribe Hub community the place you guys can come in. And it doesn't have to be personal, but at least you can, you know, share a comment or guys I did, for example, I went to Campfire yesterday. I raised the concern on time management and you know efficiency and focus. Anyone have any ideas? You find that there's someone there going through the same thing as we did in this group. So imagine now there's 165 of you around the world. And that's what we have at the tribe community. And so I would love for your support, if it's possible, to continue this dialogue there. Because even there, I can share something. And then you see someone else will share something. And before you know it, we're sharing the most important thing, I think, which is uh, tools and, and techniques and strategies. And maybe what works for me, being my, my style of working, may not work for you because you have different things. Uh, so all I'll say for now is, if you don't mind, I've got actually the gist of all your uh, issues. The only one we didn't probably touch on because it wasn't connected to time management was Fifi's concern around how to let go and delegate tasks and speak in groups. So I haven't forgotten about that. And I think a lot can be said, but in general, whether it's about speaking in groups and detaching from your business and or managing your time or managing a transition. Some of you are growing really fast. You've got to manage a transition. Some of you are downscaling really fast and you want to manage that. It's managing transitions. All I can say is step one for me, at least that seems to work every single time for any change management is having a routine to really list your top 10 priorities. You know, just really have a, and I said this to Wiener when we spent some time, the minute you understand your top 10 priorities, my friends, and you're clear on what they are. So for example, family, friends, spirituality, what they are in those areas, then I would just put it to you to say, how often are you saying no 
to the now using some of Claudia's and David's and everybody's strategies is the people who seem to have a lot of energy and a lot of focus and a lot of attention and a lot of attention and intention within their tasks that they wanna do is because they're clear about one thing. They do know how to say no to lower priorities. They just know how to say no to lower priorities. So once it becomes a priority to delegate something, for example, in Fifi's case, you will start saying no to doing dollar productive less time or things that don't scale your business. And until you start learning to say no and not maybe, or let me make some time on Tuesday, you're not gonna have the energy to actually put towards the things that you have to learn to say yes to. So that's just one summary takeaway from pretty much all of our, our conversations is first list your priorities, know them in order of hierarchy. And then the ones that are lower down, if they come to you as, as requests from other people, you have to exercise the no button. And if you do not, you're basically saying no to your own priorities. And there's nothing in between, unfortunately. There's nothing in between. But if you knock out your top three priorities, guess what? You have more space and time to then allocate people in these other places called white spaces in your schedule. So I'm also a big believer, and I think I got it from the team actually, you guys, to not book every single thing into my schedule. It's actually urgent important for me to keep white spaces in my calendar so that we can have an occasional chat, right, Nadia, on Sundays. That was in my white space time because it just became urgent important to do that and for me, right? So thank you for making the time. But if I filled it up with something else I had to do, then I wouldn't have opportunities to go, oh, I do have more space. Let me call someone and make a deeper connection because that's what I actually need right now. And I think that's touching on what David is saying about doing what's emotionally aligned with you in the moment. You've got to have some white spaces for your day so you can go on of those important but maybe not planned things that really fulfill you so you can have the energy to go back to your tasks. But you have to then say no to fill them up with lower priority things. Yeah, so just to finish on a quote someone gave me very early on that might help you. But again, let's continue this on Facebook uh, tribe, tribe community is you know, if you, you know, you know, if you don't make plans for your own life, you're gonna fit into other people's plans. But most people, guess what plans they have for you? Not much, because they're too busy on their own plans. So everyone is making requests for everyone else. But if you have a clear priority list, you know they're just making requests because they've got priorities to attend to, but so do you. So you have to say no to their priorities, unless they fit into your priorities. And if they don't, they have to be delegated to later down the week time, called white space time. That's what I would recommend you do. And just attack the difficult things first, okay? Those are the hardest things to do. So always attack the difficult things first. Uh, so those are just a couple of tips from me, but again, might not work for you, might do. It's just saying no has probably been for me the biggest energy management I've ever done recently. And then from there, I can then start to say yes to things uh, that are really important. So I hope that helps. Okay, uh, thank you guys. So maybe just to close, let's do one little takeaway, just a little, little quick one all around the room and then uh, we'll call it a night. But uh, thank you for staying back. It's been really, really good. So starting with uh, Lisa, what's your one takeaway from today's uh, campfire for, what are we, May? Oh my goodness, <laughs> almost halfway through the year. One, one takeaway from today's campfire. Um, it, it's kind of nice to see how like uh, our problems are related to time and energy. Um, and it was good to talk about it. Mm. And I'm thankful for all of the feedback and insight on that. Yeah, no, awesome. Thanks for sharing. Awesome. Fifi, one takeaway from today. I think it's the first time I've seen you. Yeah, but I, I see that, you know, it, it's good that everyone can open themselves and that it's make me learn how to make myself more open. It's not easy for me. Mm. It's not easy. Mm. No, thanks for being open. Thank you. And, and trust me, most people are like that in this group. <laughs> most entrepreneurs, we're all like that. But once we know everyone is as crazy as we are, we start to open up. So I'm glad you feel safe. Thanks for being part of the journey. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nadia, take away from today. Um, it's um, uh, David and Fifi's project. A uh, very nice presentation, and the project is very impressive. Mm. So, good luck, guys. 
Yeah. And hope to connect more with you guys. Nice, nice, awesome. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Wina, one takeaway from today. Uh, we got the sign, but we couldn't hear what you said. What? Can you hear Wina or is it me? No, we can't hear you, Wina. It's carrying, so that's all okay. I can say. We heard the last part. What? <laughs> oh, you Sharing is caring. Ah, sharing is caring. Yes, nice. She's she's a marketing guru in our department, guys. So all these great flyers, all of you see with better spelling. That's Wina helping us. So thank you for that, Wina. Sharing is caring. Awesome. Uh, David. Um, yeah, just seeing, just hearing about people's problems and hearing their solutions, and um, just being able to reflect on that and have the time. To reflect on these issues i'm yeah. really grateful for it. yeah it's necessary thanks man cheers claudia thanks for facilitating well, yeah no thank you guys thank you for coming please invite everybody tell them come to this event so we are more people and we can maybe we have similar problems so please invite them to join us or to join in facebook and the other thing guys is for us is really really important that you evaluate these meetings, okay? Because then we can improve more. So please, 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 we will send the evaluation forms and please just take very 30 seconds, fill in, send it to us because it's really important for us, okay? So thank you guys. And I learned a lot from every one of you. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Thank you everyone. Yeah, thanks guys. You have a great night guys. And thanks for participating. See you this time next month. Yeah, Cheers. have a good night. And connect Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right, ciao. Thanks, guys. Thanks, David. Great presentation. Thank you. Thanks.